We do not know the causes of ASD, but recent findings highlight the need to focus on both environment and genetics. NIH and CDC have established large research networks to collect extensive data on environmental exposures and health outcomes and conduct powerful analyses to identify factors that contribute to autism. Those networks explore possible causative factors in the environment before, during, and after pregnancy. Just this week, one of these networks published a study that suggests prenatal and early life exposure to car emissions is associated with autism. On the services front, HRSA has invested substantially in improving physical and behavioral health of people with ASD, practitioner training, and service provision. In fiscal year 2012, Congress appropriated over $47 million to HRSA for autism and other developmental disorders. This supports 43 interdisciplinary training programs, which provide services and training to 41 states and include autism intervention projects for underserved populations. Federal agencies also use public-private partnerships to maximize our work, such as NIH's National Database for Autism Research, which coordinates with other autism data repositories to enhance researchers' access to data. Programs like these that involve collaboration with patients and families bring together hundreds of researchers and clinicians with tens of thousands of people nationwide affected by ASD. The Administration on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, with help from several nonprofit organizations, supports the Autism Now Project, offering a call center, a web based clearinghouse of resources, and twice weekly autism webinars. The NIH supported the Association of University Centers on Disabilities is improving early identification of autism through 25 ACT Early Ambassadors who train physicians in identifying, diagnosing, and managing ASD. In conclusion, since the establishment of the IACC, a wide variety of research, service, and education expertise have come to bear on autism. Research is rapidly translating to practical tools for use in the clinic and the community. Federal agencies are coordinating efforts to identify best practices to support the lifelong education, health, and employment needs of people on the spectrum. Thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony on such an important topic. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Boyle. Good afternoon, Chairman Issa, Ranking Member Cummings, and distinguished members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I'm Dr. Colleen Boyle. I'm an epidemiologist and the director of the National Center on Birth Defects and Developmental Disabilities at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. CDC works to keep America safe from health threats of all kinds. Our FY2012 autism budget is about $21 million, and today I'm going to describe how we use those funds. Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is an important public health concern in the United States. ASD is a group of developmental disorders characterized by unusual patterns in communication, behavior, and attention. There, while there's no known cure, research is yielding innovative screening tools to detect ASD in early childhood and new behavioral therapies that can improve outcomes. CDC data indicate that more children are being identified with an ASD than previous years. The toll of ASD is significant and has profound implications for affected children and their families. CDC works steadfastly to alleviate this burden by tracking ASD, promoting the early identification, and addressing the unanswered questions through research. CDC supports ASD surveillance or tracking in 12 states. Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Missouri, Wisconsin, North Carolina, New Jersey, Maryland, South Carolina, Arkansas, Alabama, and Georgia through our Autism and Developmental Disabilities, or ADAM network. ADAM's goal is to, complete, is to provide comparable population-based prevalence estimates in different sites over time. In March of this year, CDC released updated estimates of the prevalence of from the Adam Network based on our 2008 data indicating that one in 88 children had been identified with an ASD. This is greater than the prevalence of one in 10, one in 110 released in 2009 based on 2006 data and one in 150 released in 2007 based on 2002 data. While there's no simple explanation for the increase, we know that it is due, at least in part, to improved diagnosis and increased recognition. 
Data from the Atom Network provide more than just a prevalence estimate. And because of this data, we know that ASD remains nearly five times more common among boys than girls. We know that the largest increase over time are among Hispanic and African American children and children without intellectual disability. We know that the prevalence varies widely, the, the identified prevalence varies widely from 1 in 210 to 1 in 147. And that although more children are being diagnosed at earlier ages, there are far too many that are not diagnosed until it's too late to receive the full benefit of early services. Overall, it's clear that families and children need help, and our data is helping to provide that. Research tells us that the earlier a child is connected to services, the greater the benefit. CDC works to increase early identification by offering free tools and assistance to states through our Learn the Signs Act Early program. We provide these tools to healthcare professionals, child care providers, and parents with a focus on minority and economically disadvantaged populations. CDC is also working with our federal partners to provide national goals in early screening, diagnosis, and service enrollment, giving communities, as well as the federal government, a benchmark to measure progress. To identify causes of ASD, we must first understand the risk factors. CDC's study to explore early development is the largest epidemiologic study of ASD in the country, and it involves sites in Georgia, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Iowa, California, and Pennsylvania. CDC works to identify factors that put children at risk, including genetic, environmental, maternal health, and behavioral factors, with a special emphasis on the interaction between environment and genetic factors. We are an active member in the Autism Coordinating Committee, and we really provide that epidemiologic and public health perspective. CDC contributed to the development of the IACC strategic plan for autism research, and our activities are key components of that plan. ASD is an important and an immediate public health concern. More children than ever are being identified, and families and communities are struggling with the financial burdens, the complex health care decisions, and the service needs. We know it is frustrating to have more questions than answers. And we share that frustration and are committed to improving our understanding of what is putting our children at risk. CDC will continue to document the burden of ASD in states through our ADAM network, develop resources and help states improve early identification through our Learn the Science Act Early program, and maintain our important epidemiologic focus through the SEED Research Network to understand why some children are more likely to develop autism. Thank you for the opportunity to present this testimony, and I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you both. Uh, I'm going to recognize myself first, and I'll ask both the, uh, the experts to forgive me for being very basic in a couple of questions, but I, I hope that it sheds a balance on this hearing. Dr. Boyle, as far as you know, for either of you, uh, is autism, does autism in history predate all vaccines? In other words, was there autism before there were vaccines? 